To a snail that sailed, written and read by Jana Slobodova. Do you like going to the beach? Picking shells and wading in the waves, with the wet sand tickling your toes? I don't know anybody who wouldn't like that. In fact, I know a snail who simply loves being at the seaside. This snail's name is Tony. He asked me not to mention his last name, as he is a very shy creature and does not like too much attention. He did agree with me telling you this story, though, and that is exactly what I am going to do. So, as I said, Tony was a little snail who loved the beach. You see, he used to live in this magnificent garden full of juicy fresh kale leaves, plump white cauliflowers and crispy cabbages. It was a snail's dream come true. Often he wandered over to the other side of the vegetable patch and peeked through a knot-hole in the old wooden fence where he could see the white sandy dunes and the azure waves moving in and out in the calm and composed rhythm of the sea. He would sit by the knot-hole for hours, crunching a curly kale leaf and listening to the secrets that the ocean whispered to the sand with every gentle stroke, and he would be happy just munching away in the shade. This is heaven, he thought, and he was very happy that he lived in this wonderful garden with his own private splendid view. But as it often happens in life, everything was soon to change in the most uncomfortable way. One sunny day, as he was dozing off in the shade of the fence, he was rudely awakened from his nap. He heard a sharp shriek, and before he could open his eyes and say mollusk, he was lifted off of his cabbage leaf and was whooshing through the sky. Tony instinctively tucked into his little snail house and stuck out one of his eyes, just a wee tiny bit, to see what was happening. But he wished he had never looked. Above him was the largest and the hungriest-looking seagull he has ever seen, and below his garden was getting smaller and smaller with every flap of the mighty wings, and worse still, the endless blue of the sea was getting bigger and bigger as the gull took him higher and further away from the shore. This is it, I'm done for, said the snail, and retracted his one curious eye back into his shell, when BAM! The hungry seagull seemed to have smashed against something mid-air, and the sail went falling down towards the big blue. As he fell, the snail peeked out of his house once again, just in time to realize that the seagull had been clouted by another hungry bird, and now they were squabbling loudly in the air above him. Of course, they were oblivious to the fact that their feast was plummeting down towards an, inv an inevitable doom. Or was he? Tucked back in his shell, knowing for sure he would drown, Tony was anticipating the cold splash of water, when instead he landed on something soft and fluffy and, well, unexpectedly dry. He decided to stay hidden for a while just in case. After a few moments, he heard a small but very polite voice. Excuse me, is anybody home? Being a snail of good manners, Tony felt that it would have been rude not to answer the door. So he peeked out of his shell once again and saw standing there before him a smiling grey-coated cat. Good afternoon said the cat, and she curtsied. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mitzi the Third, and you just happened to land on me as I was resting under this mast. I wanted to make sure that you were okay. Are you? You seem a bit shaken. Oh, thank you, responded the snail. My name is Tony, and I have been dropped in a most disgraceful way, right from the sky above us. Excuse my barging in on you like this. Would you like to come in and have a cup of tea? Tony asked, before he realized that there was no way for Mitzi to fit into his house. You are kind, but I would rather stay on guard. I am quite enjoying the voyage. I am on my way to China, you see, to visit my great-grandfather. China? 
exclaimed the snail. Oh, no, that cannot do. I need to get back to my vegetable patch. My kale needs me. And with a desperate look on his face, he looked around the vessel in search of a way to get back to the shore. However, he had no idea how to get back, and now he could not see the shore at all. Kind Mitzi, began the snail, would you please be so kind as to take me to the top of the mast, so that I can look around for a way to get back to my home? No need, said the cat. I know someone who can help you. She picked Tony up gently with her mouth and carried him to the ship's rail. At the edge she put him down gently. Then, after a few moments, she took the snail up again and threw him overboard. Tony felt the coldness of the sea and the sting of the salty water splashing over him and swishing into the house. But again, as before, he quickly realized that all was not as it seemed. From somewhere he became aware of someone humming an old pirate shanty. The water disappeared as quickly as it had arrived, and the snail found himself in another peculiar predicament. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum, hum hum hum, yaddy dum dum. From above he heard the cat's distant voice. This is my friend Terence, the sea turtle. He is hundred and fifty years old, a bit forgetful, and a bit deaf too. But he will take you to the shore, won't you, Terence? Terence didn't answer. In fact, he looked like he didn't even hear. But Mitzi looked calm and content. See you later, my little friend, and farewell, Mitzi meowed from the ship, as she seesawed up and down between the waves and eventually disappeared. Hi, said Tony, who felt a bit like he was talking to a rock. My name is Tony. But Terence didn't answer. He continued humming his tune and floating on the surface of the sea, drifting to God knows where. There was nothing to do, just hope that he knew what he was doing. So Tony made himself quite comfortable. He stretched his tail and had just settled down for a nap when, splash, the turtle's back disappeared under the surface and poor Tony was left bobbing upside down in the middle of the sea. Terence, Terence, shouted Tony, but the turtle had forgotten about the little passenger on his back. Quite hungry he was and had swam off into the depths to look for algae, abandoning his passenger. Oh my, oh my, thought Tony, and then came up with a brilliant idea. He reached back into his kitchen. There is an advantage to carrying your house on your back everywhere you go. And grabbed his soup ladle, and using his shell as a kind of improvised raft, he reached out to his front door and began spooning the water. He had no idea which way was home, but he felt that anything was better than just sitting and waiting to drown. And so he rode and rode and felt quite invigorated. He even began to sing, to keep himself going. Nevertheless, as you can guess, his adventure was not over yet. A hungry codfish swam by and was attracted by his happy song. He could, she couldn't think of anything more cheerful than a singing dinner, and with one big gulp she swallowed Tony whole. Then... She vanished in the dark depths of the sea, just like it had done Terence before her. Tony sat in the cold, wet darkness of the cod's belly, and this time he was certain that he would never see the light of the day again. He felt afraid and so lonely. He closed his eyes and remembered his garden and his beautiful view and the whispering waves playing with the sand on the beach behind his fence. It was pitch black, and as he was quite exhausted after the long and arduous journey, the poor snail went to sleep. When Tony next opened his eyes, he saw a very bright light. At first he didn't know where he was. Then he remembered all that had happened to him the day before, and he was wondering, what next? The bright light belonged to the sun. Just a few hours ago he was in the belly of the hungry cod, tens of meters below the surface of the sea. 
what had happened. Then he saw a huge hand picking him up by the shell, and a big friendly voice said, How did you get in there, little fellow? I have a nice little garden over there behind that fence. I think that I will put you there. If that is all right with you. Tony was speechless. He realized that the soft, warm voice was that of a local fisherman, who, among other fish, had caught the cod that ate him. He put Tony in his pocket, lifted up his bucket of fish, and went off home. Finally, the fisherman took Tony back out of his pocket, and Tony couldn't believe his own eyes. There was his old vegetable patch, his cabbages and kale and cauliflowers, and there was his fence with his favorite view. He was back home again. Here, little fellow, welcome home, the friendly fisherman said. I'm sure you will like it here. And he placed the little snail on the leaf. I bet that I will, said Tony to himself, as he immediately picked up a stalk of cauliflower, sat himself down comfortably by the knot hole, and looked out towards the sea. Tony thought for a moment about his day. Bye, Mitzi, have a great reunion with your great grandfather, said the snail to the wind. Bye, Terence, thanks for the ride, as short as it was. And as for the cold, well, he closed his eyes and once more listened to the secret adventures that the ocean whispered to the sand.